Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, Embraer gets FAA certification for its Legacy 500, Universal unveils its InSight flight deck, and Active Control Science Sticks are among this year's top technologies at MBAA. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale, coming to you from the MBAA Convention and Trade Show in Orlando, Florida. The FAA handed over certification papers to Embraer for its Legacy 500 executive jet at a ceremony at MBAA on Wednesday. This approval enables entry into service of the aircraft in the United States and in countries that require such certification. The Legacy 500 received certification from Brazil's ANAC in August and approval by EASA is expected by the end of this year. Delivery to the first customer occurred on October 10th and up to six aircraft are expected to be delivered in 2014. CyberJet is looking forward to getting the SJ-30i into production. ANN's editor-in-chief stopped by their booth at MBAA 2014 and got an update from Mark Fairchild, general manager and director of sales and customer service. Where is the program at this stage of the game since we talked to you about a year ago and where do you go from here? Uh, where we go from here is we uh, are looking to fly our flight test airplane that has the new CyberVision and the cockpit part of the interior styling uh, early to middle of next year, certifying approximately a year later in 2016 with deliveries, uh, certainly right after we get certification of the airplane. What does the production schedule look like under the best possible terms of the immediate future? When are we going to see airplanes and about what rate might we see them? We'll start delivering airplanes, which will be the SJ-30i, which will be the Dash 2A powered airplane, middle-ish of 2016. Then we'll be putting the Dash 3AP engine on the airplane, and that certify about a year later. So because of the debt structure of the new company through the MFS bankruptcy, we have a much lighter debt load, so we have a much lower production rate. So we're looking at max production rate of delivering approximately 25 airplanes once we get the production line mature. Therefore, we're looking at just a smaller marketing segment, you know, in the light jet market, which has kind of been hit hard lately. Uh, so because of the debt structure, we don't really need to produce a lot of airplanes to maintain a profit level now. Coming up, insights on Universal Avionics InSight Flight Deck. Airborne is coming to you this week from MBAA's 2014 Annual Convention in Orlando, Florida, sponsored by Midcontinent Instruments and Avionics, proudly serving the global aviation community for more than 50 years. Visit their website at mcico.com. Meet Sam, the new 2-inch standby attitude module from Midcontinent Instruments and Avionics. Sam's unique two-screen display features high-definition graphics and extra-wide viewing angles. Get to know Sam today. Visit FlySam.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back to Airborne at MBAA 2014 in Orlando, Florida. Universal Avionics unveiled its newest avionics suite, the InSight Integrated Flight Deck at MBAA. The highlight of the system is the embedded next generation synthetic vision system with advanced mapping capability and intuitive system-wide graphical pilot interface. Primary hardware components of the InSight Integrated Flight Deck include a 10.4-inch EFI 1040 display acting as a PFD and or MFD, an electronic control display unit, an alphanumeric keyboard, and a data concentrator unit. Pilot interface and control of the system is provided through the 5-inch flat panel electronic control display unit and a cursor control panel. The first installation is on the company's Cessna Citation 7, with the STC expected in the second quarter of 2015. MD Helicopters is the launch OEM customer with the InSight Integrated Flight Deck installed on the next generation MD Explorer helicopter. Bendix King is continuing to work to keep passengers and pilots connected while in flight. ANN's Jim Campbell caught up with Bendix King's VP of Sales, Jim Zanino, to talk about the Aerowave 100. 
being connected, staying connected, and doing it without having to give away your firstborn is a really big deal. Tell me all about where Airwave is right now. Right. So you hear a lot of the key points is that nowadays society, everyone thinks that if I'm not connected, I'm going to lose business or I'm not going to be able to function anymore. And so we want to be connected all the time. So we talked to a lot of different owners in the King Air to LightJet Marketplace, and they didn't have a product in the price point that was basically made sense for them to put in the aircraft. So we came out with the Airway 100, so we leveraged some of Honeywell's technology, took one of their uh, SATCOM products, and basically took the cost out so we get it down to a price point where for $20,000, someone gets a high-speed internet solution for their aircraft. The system's great for doing text messaging, emails with attachments, you do voice over IP with it. You won't be able to do video streaming or anything like that, so it's not that kind of high speed, but for someone who's looking for a quick solution at a price point, from a state connected, say he's running the franchise business, he has to go from city to city, you know, short one hour to two hour flights. During that whole flight, he could not stay connected. The other big benefit is the data plans. So most data plans right now at the SATCOMs are done by the megabyte. So you get a big unexpected bill a lot since the end of the month. So what we did with the Airway product is develop a data plan where you buy blocks of time. So for $2,000, you get 50 hours. And that 50 hours is good for a year. And it's basically unlimited data during those 50 hours. So the way they installed it in the aircraft with the power switch, when they need it, they flip it on the timer starts, flips it off, the timer's done. So it really allows them to control their usage of the unexpected bills, which is also great for a charter operation. So if someone's got a charter, he could turn it on for the folks in the back. He knows his cost at the end of the flight. So this allows them to control their costs very easily. Coming up, a GE Honda Aero engine targets citation for an HF120 retrofit. We're coming to you from NBAA 2014 in Orlando, sponsored by True Blue Power. Innovative power solutions, including USB charging ports, inverters, emergency power supplies, and certified lithium ion aircraft batteries. Visit their website at www.truebluepowerusa.com. Today's pilots must have power for electronic flight bags, tablets, iPads, and communication devices. The TA-102 dual USB charging port delivers more power with less hassles. Available from your local avionics dealer. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back to Airborne at MVAA 2014. GE Honda Aero Engines continues to build momentum towards entry into service in early 2015 for its HF120 turbofan engine on Honda Aircraft Company's Honda Jet. The company has also announced a joint project with Sierra Industries of Uvalde, Texas to develop an engine retrofit program for the Legacy Citation Jet platform using the recently certified HF120 engine. This new project, known as the Sapphire Program, can be applied to all Citation jets, CJ1s, and CJ1 Plus models. The HF120 engine will provide the Citation jet with improved performance and enhanced productivity. The Sapphire retrofit plan would include FADEC engine management and a comprehensive suite of upgrades to modernize these aircraft. At MBAA this week, GE Honda Aero Engines signed three long-term agreements expanding its authorized service providers network. A piece of technology that so far has been unavailable in the commercial market has been introduced by two companies. First Gulfstream and their new G500 and G600 jets, and then by Sajim, a division of Safran, which is now developing an active control side stick. ANN's editor-in-chief Jim Campbell went to Sajim at NBAA 2014 to learn about their technology. The uh, active technology is very important for the uh, increase of the safety of the, uh, uh, of the system of the aircrafts today. And uh, these jets uh, are more and more uh, often using fly-by-wire system, electrical system, 
and the active side stick is the right tool to exploit to its maximum capability of this new fly-by-wire system and the flight capability of the beach jets. Here you have a technology which allows the pilot and the co-pilot to understand exactly what the other is doing. Mm -hmm. They are linked together. You have a really, you know, an understanding on what's happening, what the pilot is doing, the co-pilot can feel it. They cannot have different, you know, inputs. You know, the system is done in a way that if he wants to go on the left, you know, the co-pilot cannot go on the right on his side. So the system is really representing, you know, what really the, the aircraft is doing. As we wrap up our coverage of MBAA 2014, just a quick mention of the best party we were invited to this week. Techno Coding celebrated their rebranding as Techno Aerospace with a very nice gathering at Seasons 52 in Orlando. We're sorry if there was any disorderly conduct along the way, and thanks for the Davidoffs. Thanks for joining us this week at MBAA 2014, and be sure to stay tuned for our Friday episode of Airborne to get more news from the show, as well as the rest of the aviation industry. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.